welcome to the Jackie Griffin Show. I am so um, happy to be back here again today, as you can hear um, a little bit nasally. I have a little cold, but I'm here and we're ready to go. We have an awesome guest on our show. We have uh, actually three awesome guests today, but we're starting off with Mr. Robert L. Gatewood, who is a marketing extraordinaire. Welcome to the show, Robert. Thank you, and thank <laughs> you for having me. We are so glad that you're here with us today. So tell us a little bit about Robert. I usually start by saying that I'm the uh, son of a preacher, son of a sharecropper. In the old days, when you heard somebody say there was a son of a sharecropper, you expect great things from them. You talk about people like uh, great Marion Barry, James Brown. So I have a, a good uh, precedent by being the son of a sharecropper. Mm -hmm. And so I have a, uh, and then my dad, of course, was a Baptist minister. Mm -hmm. And so he gave me this gift of gab and the ability to talk to people and but I was called to a different calling. He was called to preach the gospel and to save souls. I was called to the, to the gospel of marketing, to mm -hmm. save businesses. Mm -hmm. So it's one of the sayings I like to use is that I don't, I'm not here to save souls, I'm here to save businesses. And that's through my marketing, I call it almost a ministry because I'm so devout to it. Mm -hmm. And I have, I'm, I'm, I'm actually on a mission. I'm on a mission. And what is your mission? Well, back in 2010, when the uh, unemployment was just running rampant in the community, particularly in our community, in the African-American community, I was, I, I've heard this saying that why complain about something that you have the ability to correct? Correct. So I started a radio show called The Marketing Pulpit with its mission to build strong businesses so we can put our people to work. I have a serious problem with every summer we load our kids in the back of our luxury cars and we take them out of our fancy swimming pools, out of our big five bedroom houses. We load them into our cars and drive them over to other communities looking for work. Mm -hmm. To me, that was a problem. I had a serious problem with that. I said, why can't we hire our own children? Mm -hmm. I think it's a full commentary on a community when you can't hire your kids. I mean, one thing, it's one thing when you can't hire a, uh, somebody and give them a $100,000 salary. I mean, that's a lot, that takes a lot of effort. But we got kids, we have children. 15, 16, 17, 18 year old children just looking for a, a $7 an hour job, a $10 an hour job to flip a burger, to mop a floor, and we're not providing those opportunities. Anyone who knows studies psychology understand that there's a cognitive thing that goes on about uh, uh, self-worth, uh, the value of hard mm -hmm. work, and if you're not providing that to children at a young age, we know what the alternative is. Drug abuse, teenage pregnancy, bullying, all of these things are the offshoot of not being able to provide these opportunities to our children. So I, I look at the long-term view. Mm -hmm. Of course, our businesses need to succeed, but something greater at stake, and that's the future of our children. So, so this ties into a greater mission of my marketing agency, my company, which is Gateway Marketing, and also tying it into the radio show now, which is the Marketing Pulpit, and it ties into my greater calling. And I go back to my dad, the basket minister, and so... He taught me the value of getting behind something, believing in something, being on this earth for something besides just trying to make a buck. Mm -hmm. So what is your marketing firm doing, uh, or how has it changed the community in the way it's helping the kids get jobs so they don't have to go to another um, community to get employment? Well, the main thing, I was taking the long-term view. We have, uh, we start in our community, there are enough businesses that start. Okay, remember that. One of the challenges is do we have enough businesses to hire the people that need the job? Mm -hmm. The answer is yes, we start enough businesses. Now, there's a big difference between starting enough businesses and having enough businesses. These businesses don't last. Most are mm -hmm. gone by the first year. Wow, okay. And the ones that do survive the first year never get to the point where they can hire. The average black business has about less than one, one employee. Mm. That means less than, you say, how can you have less than one employee? That means they're not full-time. Correct. And they definitely haven't reached the point where they can bring on somebody else. So we have a problem. We have all of these companies that, one, they're failing. The second point is that they have never reached the point where they can hire somebody. So I took it upon myself to say, let's, ins let's instead of taking a zero-based approach, let's take a macro-based approach. Let's look at the businesses that exist mm -hmm. and get them to the point where they can hire. Correct. Okay. And that is what my company has been doing. I do that through, uh, I'm an uh, instructor at the Prince George's College where I uh, teach marketing. 
I have videos, I have workshops, and I have the radio show, and of course my advertising agency, Gateway Marketing. Mm -hmm. All of them have the same mission. Let's make these businesses successful. I spent many years in corporate America. I worked in corporate America for about 20 years. Mm -hmm. I was a buyer for a national food chain. I was the president of a, um, of a home delivery supermarket. I was senior vice president of Diet to Go for 15 years. And so I took all this knowledge, and I'm saying to myself, what good is it for me to enrich myself? while my community is out here suffering. So I made a, I fell on, I called myself falling on the sword for the community. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm going to take all this knowledge and bring it back, bring it back to the community, which I don't think enough of us do, by the way. I'm going to bring it back to the community and focus on some of these issues mm -hmm. that really can, can affect the next few generations. Correct. So that's what I'm doing. And um, my most recent venture was the Marketing Pulpit Radio Show. It comes on every Friday at 10.30 a.m., and we bring on guests. We have people to tell their story. That's mm -hmm. been our theme now. You have a story. Because in going into 2015, for anyone who's interested in marketing, content is the new marketing. Mm -hmm. Traditional marketing is always going to be here. But when you look at the marketing pie, it is being sliced up in these different ways now. And content is going to be king with social media, with radio, content. Now, if you don't have your story out there, Right. Just saying I have a good mouse trap or I have a good hair salon or I have a good t shirt company. That's not enough. You have to have a story behind that and that's what I'm trying to do. Get people in front of camera like we have here today. Yes. And that story needs to get out there. Awesome, awesome. So to you, what is the importance? We were talking a little bit before the show came on about the importance of marketing. Mm -hmm. What why is marketing so important for um businesses? Well, let's put it this way. If you don't have customers, you don't have a business. Mm -hmm. Okay, you might have a hobby. You may have a reason to get out of the house every now and then. You might get a reason to put a nice tat or logo on your shirt or to drive a nice truck with your sign on it. But until you have customers, you do not have a business. Matter of fact, the IRS says you have a hobby. So let's look at it this way. So if you know that customers are the most important part of the business, what discipline, what area, what category will bring those customers in the door? And it's marketing. People don't understand what marketing is. They think marketing is advertising. They think it's uh, logo design. They think it's sales. Well, actually, marketing is more the ethereal part of bringing in customers. It's the thinking part. If I tell you to go out here and advertise on a radio show, and if you haven't done your marketing homework right, I think you're doing yourself an injustice. That simply means, one, finding out who is your target audience. Mm -hmm. That's the number one goal of marketing. If you say to me, uh, Robert, come up, and I get this all the time. People knock on my door and say, hey, Robert, I know this nice radio station. Or I know this nice website I want to advertise. I said, well, let's talk first. Let's back up a minute. Put this car in reverse. Who are you going after? Oh, I hadn't thought about that. So the job number one of marketing is understanding who your customer is. And the first test I give anybody, I say, okay, who is your customer? Because most people come to me, they say, look, Robert, I want to sell to everybody. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, boy, let me roll up my sleeve. I got a fight on my hand because that's the number one fight I have with customers, trying to convince them that everybody is not their customer. So Correct. I give them this little test. I said, okay, so you're saying everybody is your customer. So let's just, let me ask you this. How about homeless people? Are they your customer? Mm -hmm. That's okay, everybody except homeless people. I said, okay, how about, uh, how about people in, in Afghanistan? Okay, everybody except homeless people and people in Afghanistan. I said, okay, how about brand new babies? Mm -hmm. Okay, everybody except home. I said, hold on now. This can go on forever. Correct. Instead of us sitting here trying to figure out who is not your customer, let's take a little test and find out who is your customer. And once you determine who your customer is, everything starts to fall into place. Is your customer left brain or right brain? Where is the industry in the consumer adoption process? What are the five emotional reasons that they decide to buy the product, whether it's security, whether it's money, whether it's social proof, whether it's a desire to belong? What are those emotional reasons that cause them to buy the product? So we have to run that client through this marketing field to determine where are we going to go now and start marketing this product. So marketing is, uh, is probably one of the most misunderstood professions out here. Because that's what I was about to say, because um, with the new generation and this technology and this social media, some might say, well, I don't need a marketing agent. <laughs> I can just go take the social media and do the same thing that a marketing um, agent or a marketing company would do. What do you say to those people? Miss Griffin, you have just m hit on one of my pet peeves. <laughs> so let me tell you something, and I don't want to malign anybody's industry or their occupation, but there are a lot of snake oil salespeople out here mm -hmm. who are trying to convince people that I have a widget or a gadget. 
that's going to pivotally turn your business into a success overnight. It's not going to happen. Marketing is a long-term process. You don't become uh, uh, one of these big uh, Fortune 500 companies overnight. My best clients have been with me over 10 years, and some started out of the back of restaurants, some started in a trunk in their garages, and I watched, I have a client right over here on North, um, North Howard Street, that's a tax company, mm -hmm. and they came to me, they had one location, I think they may have been working out of their home. Now they have a location in D.C., they have the place right here on North Howard Street, they have a place in Woodbridge, and they have a thriving online business. Mm -hmm. They took the long view. Another company out in Virginia started working out of a back of a hotel kitchen. Mm -hmm. Now they have food from coast to coast. They took the long view to marketing. And so if you think that some little, uh, uh, you know, 10 cent gadget or free gadget you get off the internet is going to get you to that point, mm -hmm. I have some serious news for you. It just doesn't work quite that way. Uh, so you got to invest. You got to invest in something. One of the problems is that we don't look at marketing as an investment. We mm -hmm. expect something to turn around overnight. It just doesn't happen that way. You really have to take that long-term view, understand what marketing is. And so that's why I start another point why I started the show, because there's an education process that mm -hmm. has to take place. Mm -hmm. Marketing is an intangible. It's not like I can, you know, I sell you a jacket, you can see it, you can wear it, you can see if it looks good in it. Well, marketing is not like that. You've got to educate people into why it's important and that you can't go buy some free gadget and it's going to turn your company around. It just doesn't work that way. So I have to spend a lot of my time educating, and I'm right. glad to do it. Mm -hmm. Because I feel if I didn't do it, we're going to continue to see this revolving door. Somebody comes knocking and says, look, I have a company now. I'm in business. Your friends and family comes out and spend their money, but you run out of those friends real fast. Right. I tell people to use this litmus test. The first time you get a name that you can't pronounce, in your database, <laughs> you are officially in business. I remember when I was uh, did my first uh, mailing for my marketing company. I mean, first, of course, my family, they all, got the, all my customers had the last name Gatewood. I right. said, hmm, something wrong with this, because there's, there's, a, there's a finite number of Gatewoods in the world. Mm -hmm. Well, I got this one name. Uh, i never forget the guy was named, I call it uh, Magia. I said, wow, man, Mr. Magia. So I called him, I said, Mr. Magia, I, I got your message. I'm calling you in to set up an appointment. And he said, oh, yeah, by the way, the name is Mahia. Mm -hmm. I said, I am in business. <laughs> uh -huh. Got that name I can't pronounce. You have to expand your base. Correct. You have to constantly expand your base. You do that through things like social media. Social media is a tool. It's not a panacea. It's not a cure-all. Mm -hmm. So what, would you t um, what advice would you give to that person who is thinking about starting their own company or they have this gadget or, or whatever, they want to be an entrepreneur? What advice would you give them just starting out? Um. Do some research, and people think research means I got to go hire a big research firm. Well, there's primary research, there's secondary research. The primary research means, first of all, Google. See if anybody else is doing it. Who else is doing it? Uh, I had a client in my office yesterday, and he had a great idea, and he was all excited. And I said, well, look, let's just do this first step. Let's just make sure that the one of the big companies are not already doing it. Mm -hmm. I said, I mean, you, you can compete against these small guys. But you go Google it, you find out Walmart just started selling right. last week, and they have all these outlets and all this un unlimited money. So some just basic research, just to make sure you have a viable product or service. Mm -hmm. Everything that you do is not necessarily going to – some products are just <coughs> – services are never going to get off the ground. I mm -hmm. hate to say it. I hate to break, bust somebody's bubble. But sometimes people come there and sit in front of me. I'm sitting there, and I'm trying to say – while they're talking, I'm sitting there saying to myself, now what's the most kind way to break this to them? that this is never going to fly. Mm -hmm. And it's not because I'm being cocky or, or I'm a know-it-all, but that's the value of experience. That's mm -hmm. the value of finding a consultant, somebody who understands marketing, business development. Mm -hmm. So if I, if I had to cut to the chase and say, look, I'm, try I'm serious about this. I'm trying to get this off the ground. This is very important to me. I'm about to invest sums of money. Without uh, <coughs> being self-serving, you probably need a, a, a consultant, somebody mm -hmm. who's going to tell you how to do this. Mm -hmm. I can't go to the doctor and say, look, hey, look, man, I, I feel okay. I'm going to go ahead and pull my own tooth because right. I'm, I, I read a few books on it. Right. Or you can't tell a, the, the judge, look, I'm here to defend myself. I just took a five-minute law course. Something as important as business, something as that can be generational changing as your business, you need to bring in some real help. Mm -hmm. And that's why I've made myself available. And I'm telling people, look, you don't have to pay me. I have workshops. I teach courses. 
I have a radio show. Listen free if you can't afford it. Mm-hmm. But don't let money be a reason for to throw your future down the drain on some idea that you thought was going to fly, but you had no proof or validation to back it up. Awesome. That is so awesome. So can you um, tell our viewers um, your information, how they can um, go to your website or whatever social media, um, more about your company, if they just want to get in touch with you, if they want to listen to you on the radio for free, like you said, just put all of your information out there so they can contact you. Well, thank you for that opportunity. Uh, Well, my company is Gatewood Marketing, and that's at gatewoodmarketing.com. You can also call me at 301-839-2836. I have a radio show comes on Radio 1. It's called The Marketing Pulpit, and that comes on every Friday at 10.30 a.m. You can go to marketingpulpit.com and find out more about the show. We also have shows in Pittsburgh. We have shows in Baltimore. We have a show in Washington, D.C. We have one in North Carolina. And so you can find The Marketing Pulpit, and we're all preaching the same gospel. Mm-hmm. You've got to build these strong businesses to put people to work. Also, I do a blog on LinkedIn, so you can just go to rgatewood.com, and you can find all the things that I talk about, and I put them in more of a, a life perspective on how these businesses and uh, personal lives conjoin to form who we are, and it's, and it's actually going to be the foundation of my new book that's coming out called Life is a Pretty Good Job. That's going to be coming out in March. That is awesome. You have a lot going on. Why do you think a website is so important? In the old days, a website was more like a, uh, I used to have this survey, this uh, questionnaire. Somebody come to me and said, look, I want a website. And I had this long questionnaire. I was like, all right, now, what kind of business do you have? How long have you been in business? How many employees do you have? Where you're located? Well, now I have one question. Are you in business? And if you say yes, you need a website. <laughs> if you don't have a website right now, you're going to be viewed as an anomaly. People are not going to take you serious. They're going to think you're the Unabomber or something. This person doesn't have a website. You need a website now just like you need a telephone and a business card. It has worked its way up now because credibility. If you go to make that presentation, before you leave the building, they're already trying to find you on the web. Right. And they're trying to make a decision between you and three or four other companies. Right. The one that doesn't have a website is eliminated right away. I know this for a fact. Can you look into the camera and just speak your heart to our viewers? What you have been saying is so um, pivotal and it's so important, and I'm so glad that you were um, came to join us today, but please speak your heart to our viewers concerning marketing and anything else you want to talk about. Well, thank you, uh, Jack, and thanks for the opportunity. Uh, I just want to say to the to the listeners, our community is at a at a very critical time. Uh, there's all types of power, but economic power is going to be the power that's going to save us. It's going to sustain us. Our community is at the bottom rung of too many of the ladders of the measures of what makes a community successful. We have the power, we have the talent, we have the tools, if we would just use them better. And I think the thing that's going to save us is if we take the people who are building businesses, we don't have to go out and start in, in new businesses, let's look at the businesses that already exist. Let's make these businesses successful, let's get the tools we need, let's bring in the experts that can help us, and let's do everything in our power to build an economic foundation for our future and for our children. And that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Well, thank you so much, Robert Gatewood, RG, as you thank say. Thank you, RG. <laughs> for coming on the show today, and um, we'll be right back on the Jackie Gibson Show. Thank you very much, Jackie.